Uh, greetings, everybody. Um, we are recording now. Uh, this is our biweekly meeting of the UMBC Cyber Defense Lab, and today it's our privilege to have Chow Lu speak on um, Byzantine um, fault tolerance with adaptive security. Um, Chow is a PhD student uh, in the Cyber Defense Lab, and uh, um, this is the last meeting before spring break. And when we return after spring break, the next speaker will be um, uh, Jeremy Clark, who will be speaking about voting. Um, uh, Chow, would you like to take over? OK, thank you. OK. Can you see my screen? Yes. OK. So should I start? Please. OK. Um, hi, everyone. This is Chao Liu. I'm a PhD candidate from the UMBC Cyber Defense Lab. I work with Professor Alan Sherman. Uh, this work is co-authored with Dr. Sisi Duan and Dr. Haibin Zhang. Um, my presentation will be divided into eight parts. First, I will talk about the state machine replication and the Byzantine fault tolerant protocol. Uh, I will focus on asynchronous BFT protocol and introduce the modern asynchronous BFT architectures. Uh, next, I will describe the issues and uh, motivations of our paper. Finally, uh, I will summarize the implementation um, and the evaluation of our work and give the conclusion. Okay, let's start. Uh, here, we are considering client-server architecture. Um, client invokes serv services to get responses from the servers. What uh, we are concerned about is uh, comprom compromise of those servers. Uh, in, this, uh, in this example, it uh, remains a single point failure. So um, a classic method to deal with this problem is using state machine replication proposed by Lamport in 1984. The basic idea is to replicate the service uh, with multiple servers, so they collaborate in producing a response to the client even minority of the servers are faulty. This page shows the concept of state machine replication. The basic idea is that for the correct replicas, they maintain consistent state. The way is that you start the correct replicas in the same state, and then you make sure the operations what is computing deterministically. Finally, the replicas ex execute uh, operations in the same order so they can proceed in lockstep. Uh, this is also called the total order or atomic, uh, atomic broadcast. Then the replicas send their responses to the client. When clients receive responses from multiple re replicas, the client will get the right answer from the majority of the correct replicas. So this is state, state machine replication. Uh, state machine replication is a fundamental approach in distributed computing for building fault tolerant systems. So we say Byzantine fault tolerant state machine replication can deal with Byzantine uh, or arbitrary failures, or we say Byzantine or arbitrary malicious attacks. A very famous BFT protocol is PBFT, which is proposed by Castro and uh, Liskov in 1999. So PBFT uh, is also used in the IBM Hyperledger fabric. There are a lot of uh, PBFT like um, BFT protocol. Uh, this page shows uh, BFT and blockchain. BFT protocol is widely used in permission blockchain. So what is permission blockchain? The definition of uh, permission blockchain is that distributed ledgers or replicas, uh, they know each other's identities, but may not trust each other. I'll leave some uh, examples 
the BFT protocol used in um, permission blockchain, for example, uh, IBM Hyperledger Fabric use Apache Kafka and the PBFT as a controller part. Uh, Hyperledger Eroha implements Dr. Duan's Beijing, which is uh, also a kind of BFT protocol. An open source library, BFT Smart, is used in R3 Coda and the same point. And uh, uh, more and more blockchains, permission blockchains, use the BFT protocol. Uh, BFT protocol is also used in permissionless blockchains. Permission blockchains means enrollment is open to anyone and the nodes may join and live dynamically and frequently. BFT is used to improve the performance of permissionless blockchain. For example, uh, Bitcoin commits transactions every 10 minutes and uh, its throughput is limited only by uh, 7 transactions per second. So this permissions, uh, permi permissionless blockchain using BFT uh, are also known as hybrid blockchains. For example, Ethereum, uh, Casper project, uh, uh, Rapid Chain. Uh, this is hybrid blockchain. They use the BFT protocol to improve in, to improve the performance. There are three timing assumptions in BFT protocol. Um, synchrony, partial synchrony, and asynchrony. For synchrony, there is a known bound on message processing delays and transmission delays. The system based on synchrony is easy to implement. You, you just set a time bound in your system, and if, uh, if the client uh, did, uh, doesn't receive the response from the server, you can resend the request. For partial synchrony, this is a weak synchrony. Message are guaranteed to be delivered after a certain bound data. The data, that data may be unknown to the participants uh, in the system. For example, PBFT uh, uh, is a partial synchronous BFT protocol. It was shown that PBFT would achieve zero throughput against an adversarial asynchronous uh, scheduler. This attack uh, uh, is shown in Honey Badger BFT, which is pro proposed by Andrew Miller in CCS 2016. As far as we know, the partial synchronous uh, BFT protocol is dominant in blockchains because because of efficiency. Uh, record the PBFT, it only has three steps, but for the asynchronous um, BFT protocol, uh, in one round, it may have six to seven steps. So the partial synchrony, um, synchronous BFT, it has a very high efficiency. For, asynchron for asynchrony, an asynchronous BFT system um, makes no time exceptions on message processing and transmission delays. Asynchronous BFT ensures liveness of the protocol with depending on any timing exceptions. So, okay, uh, let's go step into asynchronous BFT protocol. Um, because asynchronous BFT protocol doesn't rely on any timing exceptions, so it is robust against um, denial of service DOS attacks and can be mounted over an unpracted uh, network such as the in, uh, internet. Asynchronous BFT protocol is appropriate for blockchain application where nodes or replicas are distributed in heterogeneous regions. Okay, so some traditional asynchronous BFT protocols are proposed. For example, Central and the Ritas. However, these prot protocols are only deployed in a few nodes and the, three and the throughput is low. I will talk about the uh, Ritas efficiency in later slides. Okay, so uh, the Ritas shows uh, uh, throughput in the LAN setting is only achieved 3000 transactions per second. So compared with modern um, asynchronous BFT protocols architectures, it has a low throughput. 
So um, let, um, let me talk about the asynchronous BFG protocol with modern architectures. So asynchronous BFG protocol with modern architectures is pro proposed in recent years. It can scale up to 100 nodes. So some projects are open sourced. Mm, it's easy to deploy, modify, and test. So some pra practical work is shown below. Honey Badger BFT is proposed by Miller in CCS 2016. Beat is proposed by Duan in CCS 2018. Epic is uh, published in DSN 2020. And Dubal is proposed by Gore in CCS 2020. The first two projects are open and I show their GitHub entrance below. So our work Epic is based, uh, based on the, uh, this, the, uh, this open source library, the BEAT library. Okay, uh, before I talk about the modern um, asynchronous BFT protocol, uh, first I will uh, talk, uh, I will describe the threat model of the BFT protocol. The, for the BFT protocol, where F out of N replicas can feel arbitrarily. The BFT protocols consider in this work tolerate F less than 3 over N minus 1 Byzantine failures. So for the correctness of BFT protocol, it has three properties. The first one is agreement. If an correct replica delivers an operation N, then every correct replica, replica deliver, de, uh, delivers N. This is agreement. For the total order, so if we uh, give a sequence number with an option, uh, with an operation M and another operation M delivered with the same sequence number. So we can see that uh, the M uh, equals, is, equals, is, is equal to M prime. This is total order property. And for the loudness, um, if an operation M is submitted to, uh, mo to the most cracked replicas, then all cracked replicas will eventually deliver M. So this is a thread model of the BFT protocol. So let, uh, let's go step um, to the um, to the modern asynchronous BFT architectures. So uh, um, the consensus uh, the consensus framework is also called uh, asynchronous common subset, uh, the ACS. So the ACS. Uh, has two phases, Byzantine Reliable bro Broadcast RBC and uh, Asynchronous Binary Agreement ABA. So, and the ACS framework is a leaderless consensus model. So what is RBC? Uh, for the RBC, uh, a reliable broadcast uh, um, ensures agreement so that all honest uh, 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 honest or cracked replicas deliver the same message or nothing at all. So there are four properties of the RBC. I will not de describe it in detail. And for 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 the ABA protocol, a binary agreement uh, allows allows cracked replicas to, to agree on a binary value. And there are three three properties of the ABA protocol. So uh, we can see for the, uh, uh, the, for the validity, so if all cracked replicas have the same value V, so we, we can say uh, cracked replicas will deliver V. For the agreement, um, if two replicas de delivers uh, the V, we can say V equals to V prime. And for the termina uh, termination, uh, all cracked replicas eventually deliver a binary value with prob probability with one. So, uh, for, um, so this uh, th this uh, property uh, relaxes the traditional binary agreement, and I will talk about this property in ABA uh, uh, ABA part. So uh, let me first talk about the Byzantine Reliable Broadcast, the RBC. So the famous Byzantine Reliable Broadcast is pro 
proposed by Brocha in 1987. So in order to explain the protocols clearly, most examples in this presentation uh, assume F, uh, F equals one and the total number uh, of replicas is three F plus one equals four. So you can see uh, there are four replicas P0 to P3 in this slide. So the, in this example, uh, we only show P0 broadcast message M. There are three steps in RBC. Um, the first step is called send, send, send phase. So P0 broadcast M to other replicas. So when, when P1, P2, P3, and P0 uh, receive this message M uh, and from the majority of the replicas, they will broadcast the message uh, tagged with echo, echo to other replicas to say, I have received this message M. Um, so when other replicas receive echo message and before they deliver this message, um, they, uh, they first broadcast the message target with ready to other replicas to say, I'm prepared to deliver the message M. Um. Finally, when every correct replicas receives the majority of the ready message from uh, other replicas, uh, every correct replica will deliver the same message M. However, Broadcha broadcast, it has N square, N square multiplies M commun communication complexity. So how to improve the efficiency of the Byzantine reliable, uh, reliable broadcast? So in order to save bandwidth and to improve the efficiency, the modern asynchronous BFT protocol uses Kashin's work uh, proposed in SRDS 2005. First, it use, uses N-2FN Eviro coding scheme to encode the scheme M. In this example, um, in, in, exam, in, in this example, f equals to one and n is four. So we have two for EV recording. That means the message will, will be encoded with four blocks and any of two blocks can recover this m. So we can consider that if some of the blocks uh, is lost in the network. So if we have two blocks, we can recover this this message M. After that, uh, these four blocks, S1, S2, S3, S4, um, can act as uh, leaves and construct a Merkle tree. So compared with the traditional RBC, which send a whole message M in send step, Cushion's uh, approach just sends the branch, branch to the corresponding replica. So in this example, finally, um, there are four branches, um, B, um, B0, B1, B2, B3, and for example, B0, uh, the P0 just sends uh, uh, the branch B1 to repli replica uh, P1. So the branch B, uh, B1 just include two hash functions, the root uh, hash function of um, a value h uh, h zero and h one and the and the um, um, and the block s two. So how does um, um so how um, so how does it work? Uh, in the RBC, I can show you. So first, we know we know that uh, in the send step, the p zero uh, encodes m to four blo uh, four blocks, uh, b zero to b three. And uh, it 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 uh, doesn't send the whole message to other replicas. It just sends each blocks to the corresponding replica. So recall that in the traditional RBC, the P zero needs to send the whole message M to uh, each replica. So if the bandwidth is low, so this is the bottleneck for the broadcaster. 
So this is the sand phase in RPC. So for the echo, echo phase uh, in the RPC, each replica broadcast is received block. So we can say that um, uh, every replica, uh, I can show it again. So we know that in the stand phase, every uh, replica just uh, received uh, the uh, block of the message M. And in the echo phase, every replica, they broadcast uh, their received uh, block. So we can see at the end of the echo phase, uh, uh, every uh, replica will, uh, if, in the best scenario, they will just receive all the blocks of the message M. And uh, the last phase is uh, ready phase. So in red step, each replica broadcasts the message target tagged with ready to see that I have received enough blocks from the same original broadcaster and I'm prepared to deliver. Finally, uh, every replica can use Eurero coding scheme to decode these blocks and recover message M. So we can see that, for example, P1, if P1 uh, lost uh, part of the blocks, for example, B1 and B2 in the network, but it, it has also uh, received the B0 and B3. So for the um, two-fold Eurero coding scheme, uh, P1 can recover this message M. So this is uh, uh, what in, improves in the, in the modern asynchronous BFT protocol. And next I will introduce the asynchronous binary agreement. A binary agreement starts when a replica proposes a binary value for the agreement instance, and it de uh, determine, determines when the uh, or, uh, and it terminates when the replica decides for a binary value. Um, let's recall the celebrated FLP in, in possibility result. Uh, that is, no deterministic algorithm solves consensus in asynchronous systems. Um, this is uh, um, proposed in 1984. So to Circumvent the, the FLP result. Randomization is a technique that has been used. Um, randomi randomization uses a probabilistic approach where the termination of consensus is ensured with probability of one. So this is a, a property of the termination of the asynchronous binary agreement. So we just ensure that. Um, the consensus of the termination uh, with a probability of one. Okay, so essentially, uh, how to achieve the randomized protocol? So randomized protocols are based on a ran random operation uh, tossing a coin, uh, which returns value values zero or one with equal uh, probability. Most specifically, in order to avoid deterministic choice, if the replica cannot de uh, decide in one round before the next round, it generates a random binary and then it pro proposes it. So there are uh, two quant tossing methods, uh, common quant scheme and the local quant scheme. So for the, uh, the first one is called the local quant scheme. The local quant scheme is very simple. Every re replica just uh, um, uh, independently tossing a coin. So this method um, uh, avoids using the crypto cryptography primitives, but has a high time and communication complexity. And it can terminate in an expected uh, exponential number of runs. The second scheme is called the common coin scheme. Uh, it rely on external trusted process. So 
uh, the common point scheme it, uh, often use, uses a symmetric cryptography primitives, but has a low time and communication complexity. And it can termi terminate uh, in an expected constant number of runs. So in some paper, it proves that uh, the common coin scheme just uh, reached a decision in one or two rounds with a high probability. So this is a co uh, common coin and local coin scheme used in asynchronous BFT protocol. Okay. Uh, next, uh, um, let me uh, talk about how to how to uh, uh, how to uh, realize the common coin scheme. So most of the common coin scheme uh, they construct on threshold signature scheme. And what is threshold signature scheme? Uh, F n threshold signature scheme, where F is the threshold and n is the total number of uh, um, players. It means that given F plus one such signature shares for message M, anyone can combine the shares uh, to produce a valid signature and verify it. But if the adversary controls fewer than F plus one shares, uh, the adversary was relance nothing. So let's see uh, how to generate the common coin in asynchronous BFT protocol. So there is a, trust, uh, a trusted dealer in the system and it generates a public key uh, for all replicas and generates um, secret key SKI for every replica. So when a Tracked replica cannot decide uh, in one round, it calls get coin uh, method. So every replica will use the threshold sign uh, algorithm to generate its uh, signature share and broadcast it. So the, for the uh, replica PI, it uses its uh, secret key SKI and to sign the message and SID means the name of the this common coin. Okay. So upon receiving uh, at least F plus one shares, a replica attempts to combine them into a signature. So mm, um, the replica PI can uh, can combine this signature and to recover the signature uh, the signature. And all replicas can verify verify it. And finally, uh, the replica can map the uh, signature to a random value zero or one with the f function. So this is a um, common coin scheme uh, used in asynchronous BFT protocol. Okay. Uh, I have talked about the RBC and ABA, and I will use this toy example to show how to combine RBC and uh, ABA in the ACS framework. In this toy example, there are four replicas, P0 and uh, um, uh, two P3, and they propose their transactions tx0 to tx3 separately. So we, we have known that ACS have two phases, RBC and ABA. So in this uh, example, I only show the message flow for transaction tx0. Uh, so in the RBC uh, phase, tx0 is broadcast and eventually delivered by all replicas. So at the end of the RBC, every replica will say that I have received the TX0. And the uh, next step is the uh, ABA protocol. So after that, an ABA instance uh, is triggered where replicas will vote one to uh, rep represent that they have uh, 
receive the TX0 in RBC and they will vote for if they um, vote for if they want to add this TX0 uh, at the end of the ACS subset. So uh, every um, if this TX0 is not in the transaction buffer, every um, ABA will vote one to uh, to see that I will add it and they will run this consensus protocol. So finally, after the ABA instance terminates with one, replicas will finally uh, deliver this TX0. They run the broadcast and the uh, ABA agreement protocol to add this TX0 in their buffer. Okay, this is a high level of the ACS framework. However, um, we cannot simply uh, implement the ACS. Uh, this op optimization uh, would uh, compromise the sensor censorship uh, resilience. So, uh, the adversary could uh, selectively censor a transaction, excluding whichever nodes propose it. So, in order to avoid this pitfall, it uses thresh threshold encryption, which prevents the adversary from learning which transactions are proposed by which nodes until after ACS is finished. So this is the uh, uh, definition of the threshold um, scheme. The TPKE, um, the TPKE is a cryptographic uh, primitive that allows any party to encrypt a message with a public key of all replicas and nodes must work together to decrypt this um, ciphertext. So there are four steps in the uh, threshold encryption scheme. The first one is uh, a setup. So the dealer will generate the PK for all replicas and um, distribute the uh, SK, uh, the secret key for every replica. And the client will use the uh, public key of all the uh, of the private key uh, to encrypt the message M and send this message M to uh, every replicas. And every replica will use the secret key uh, secret key to produce the ith share of the decryption. So uh, a client can combine uh, uh, this. Uh, a set of decryption shares uh, from at least F plus one parties to obtain the plant exam. So before the client sends the message to the replicas to run the ACS framework, uh, the users first use a threshold encry encryption scheme to encrypt this uh, message. And the adversary can cannot tell uh, what it is and the adversary cannot decrypt it by itself. So this is threshold encryption. Okay, next uh, let me introduce the issues and the, uh, motivations in our work. So depending on how the adversary decides to craft parties, there are two types of corruptions for BFT protocols. Uh, the first one is static corruptions where the adversary is restricted to choose a set of corrupted replicas as a start of the protocol and cannot change this set later on. We can see that Bit, Honey Badger, BFT, and Central uh, achieve static security. And this pro, uh, papers uh, prove that uh, the statically uh, secure protocols are not adaptively secure. Okay, another um, Adapt uh, 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 another uh, corruption is adaptive corruption, uh, which means uh, the adversary can choose a set of corrupted replicas at any moment during the execution of the protocol based on the information it accumulated. So most of the existing BFT protocols that assumes a partial synchronous model, model for example, PBFT, ZZVAN, 
achieve adaptive security. So why uh, Central Honey Badger Beat achieve static security only? Uh, the key to this is due to the choice of threshold cryptography, including both threshold encryption and through uh, threshold PRF. In Beat, uh, we use the threshold encryption to in, uh, encrypt um, the transaction to prevent from censorship attacks where the adversary could manipulate the transactions proposed by replicas to lower the throughput. In addition, we use the threshold PRF uh, as a common coin. Uh, so the similar approaches are used in Central uh, and the Honey Badger. Unfo unfortunately, none of these achieve adaptive security. Okay. Mm. So how to achieve adaptive security? Uh, the first uh, method is use, uh, using local coin because the local coin uh, doesn't rely on any cryptography uh, primitives, so it doesn't rely on any uh, that, uh, uh, um, static uh, threshold um, cryptography. So previous asynchronous ABA protocols are based on common coins such as Central Honey Badger and Beat. Uh, another way to achieve adaptive security in ABA protocol is using local coin scheme, which means that each replica generates a random coin independently. Um, so we use a broadcast approach. We call our this approach is uh, epic local. However, ABA from local coins usually involves significantly more steps than those from common coins. For example, the broadcast local coin scheme use nine steps in one round, but the central honey badger and beat, the common coin scheme just has uh, three, uh, three steps in one round. So uh, we use the local coin approach in current uh, modern ACS framework, so it remains to say how the corresponding uh, epic local uh, pro protocols performance. So another way uh, to achieve adaptive security in epic, we obtained the first adaptively secure ABA protocol running in um, N square communication complexity by using the LM the LM LGY threshold PRF from common coins, which based on the loss and brown threshold PRF. And the threshold PRF is built on adaptively secure threshold signature proposed by Libert in 2016. So I use the LM LGY to stand for the um, threshold PRF. Uh, and the this is the for thre uh, threshold signature. So the, uh, this threshold signature is fully distributed and it is non-interactive and it also achieves uh, adaptive security. Mm, so EPIC combines LM, LGY, uh, uh, threshold PR adaptive uh, PRF and the Cobalt ABA to achieve adaptive security. And I will talk about the Cobalt ABA uh, uh, in later slides. Okay, so another sta uh, static security aspect in previous protocol is using threshold encryption scheme. So our next step in this work is to remove threshold encryption so all the transactions proposed by replicas are in plain text. This, however, will uh, potentially make the protocol suffer from censorship attacks. As far as I know, um, we we don't have uh, um, adaptive secure threshold encryption. So the basic approach is uh, a first in first out transaction selection used in Sintra. For first in first out, in this example, the replica choose the first two transactions in these five, five elements. The protocols, but the first in first out protocol achieves low throughput because of proposing overlapped transactions. So, in order to improve the efficiency in bit 
and the honey badger. Each node propose randomly, randomly choosing tr transactions. But uh, to prevent censorship attacks, uh, Bit and honey badger use threshold encryption, which prevents the adversary um, learning um, the transactions are proposed by which nodes until after agreement is uh, already reached. Since there is no known practical threshold encryption that achieves adaptive security, we can only use plain text for the transaction. So in our work, we take a different approach to achieve high throughput and prevent censorship attacks. We call this approach hybrid random transaction selection. Um, uh, sp specifically, we ask replicas to select random transactions in plan text for most mu epochs and periodically switch to the first in first out selection in every data epochs. As a result, hybrid random transaction achieves both high throughput and avoid censorship attacks. Besides adaptive security, we also notice that is a problem with ABA protocol, specifically Bit and Honey Badger. Use, use MMR ABA protocol, the pseudocode of which is shown in the slide. So MMR is a signature free and the most efficient ABA protocol, according to our knowledge. This ex protocol is expected to terminate in two rounds and each round has two to three steps. However, a liveness issue has been reported in the, in the slides. A malicious network work scheduler can make correct nodes always enter the next round with inconsistent values. So the best known solution is Cobalt ABA, uh, which has one additional step for each round. Therefore, in EPIC, uh, we use Cobalt by default, although it has one additional step. OK, uh, that concludes the main components of EPIC. During evaluation, we seek to answer a few questions regarding the choice of RBC, ABA, crypto, and also transaction selection. First, Cobalt ABA has one more step than MMR ABA, which may potentially lower the performance. Second, we use the LMLGY threshold PRF, which has full pairing computation for signature verification. So we would like to know whether this will cause significant performance uh, degradation for the protocol. And we also want to learn the performance, which use, uses local coin scheme to achieve adaptive security. Fourth, we also would like to know how our approach for transaction selection performs. So to evaluate the performance, we use the B0 as a baseline. Okay, so this is for implementation. Um, we implement Epic use Python. The entire EPIC library uh, includes uh, these lines of Python code. Um, and the most important thing we also have done uh, to use the BN256 curve, but the already uh, library, uh, Charm Python library, it doesn't include it. So we wrap the Relic C++ library 8 and to achieve 110 B security. The implementations are done in Amazon EC2. We are up to 91 virtual machines that distribute in different regions across five continents. So to summary, we compare these five protocols in this table with different combinations, such as transaction, uh, transaction selection method, common coin, and the local coin scheme, and so on. So this is uh, what we want to com uh, com um, compare in our evaluation. So for the evaluation part, all transactions are of size 250, uh, um, 15 bytes. So uh, we vary the B. B is a batch size for transaction pro proposed by each replica. And the to test the Performance in the LAN, uh, which means virtual machines are launched in the same EC2 region. For the one setting, virtual machines are distributed in different regions. And we use F 
to represent the network size and the total number of replicas is n equals 3a plus 1. To test the latency, we set the b equals to 1, which means uh, each replica proposes only one um, single transaction. To test the throughput, we vary the uh, size of uh, batch of the transaction um, until the throughput re reaches its peak and uh, uh, its peak and uh, uh, stabilize. Okay, this is the latency of the epic. So we can see that. For the example, this is bit. Uh, this is the bit, and bit cobalt. We know bit cobalt has one additional step. So you can see that no matter in LAN and in one. Uh, co um, cobalt ABA has a high latency than bit. And this is uh, epic use MMR, and this is epic use cobalt. Cobalt has one additional step. So whatever in LAN setting and in one setting, we can see that the, um, the epic with cobalt ABA has a high latency. And, um, because, and for the bit, and uh, and the and the epic we know that bit just have two uh, two pairing uh, computations in the ABA, but the epic has four pairing computations in that. So epic has a high latency than bit, and this is epic local. We can see that uh, we know that epic local has nine steps. Um, in ABA, so uh, when uh, so in the one setting, we can see that the epic local has a high uh, has the highest uh, uh, latency. And because the time is limited, I just uh, so, uh, show an other um, result. For example, this is the throughput for the uh, uh, bit cobalt and the epic. So we vary the uh, network size from one to uh, 30. So when F equals to uh, 30, the total number of replicas is, uh, is uh, 91. So we can see, uh, we can conclude that uh, Epic has only 2% and 2%, uh, 5% and 21% uh, lower throughput than beat Cobalt when F equals to one to five respectively. Um, we can also say that when the replicas, when F equals to 10, and uh, the epic uh, throughput is around 8,000 to uh, about 8,000 transactions per sec second. So, so this is uh, throughput for bit cobalt and epic. And this is a uh, um, um, uh, this uh, compare with uh, bit cobalt epic and epic local. Uh, in this picture, we can say that um, bit cobalt has a higher throughput than uh, epic local, um, and epic local has a high throughput than epic when f equals to one and f equals to two in the LAN setting. Mm. Uh, this is ex expected because uh, the uh, the compute the communication over overhead of epic local is low, um, and the epic local does not involve any threshold cryptography. This is uh, throughput in line, and uh, we also show um, show the throughput in one compared with bit cobalt epic and epic local. Okay, so I will not uh, explain the result. So um, I give the conclusion, EPIC is an efficient asynchronous BF protocol and it achieves adaptive security. And uh, uh, because the uh, threshold uh, signature is also uh, adaptive secure one, so we use a decentralized key uh, distribution for threshold signature. And 
we mix match uh, these building blocks, for example, the ABA cryptography transaction selection method to understand the asynchronous BFT protocol. And EPIC is not much lower than asynchronous BFT protocol with uh, its counterpart sta uh, static security. Okay, thank you. Uh, that concludes, uh, concludes my presentation. Any questions? Can you tell us um, what else you're working on, what your future plans are, and how this work fits into your dissertation? Um, this work is about the uh, adaptive security of the asynchronous BFT protocol and other uh, async, uh, other current async, asynchronous BFT protocols want to improve the performance of the asynchronous BF protocol. So uh, my next step is to design the, um, the asynchronous protocol with high performance. And uh, this EPIC and uh, the rejected one, uh, MIB, uh, these are two asynchronous BFT protocol in my dissertation. I don't know if I uh, answer your questions. Uh, there's a question on the chat. Okay. You... Okay, I answer the last question. So can you share your thoughts on the efficiency of EPIC or some complex, complex transaction? So I don't know what is complex transactions here. So in our, in, in our work, we just send the, the transaction which has uh, 215 bytes and our work uh, has not constructed on any blockchain system, but uh, for the CCS paper, they plan to uh, plug the asynchronous BFT in Hyperledger fabric. Okay, thank you. For the work you presented, what was the most difficult part for you to accomplish? Mm, first, uh, first we found uh, the the static security uh, problem issues in in the current work, and uh, first we want to find uh, the way to solve this problem. Uh, the simple way is use the uh, adaptive th uh, threshold PRF. Um, but uh, another way we found is very, for example, the uh, local coin scheme and uh, how to mix and match these blo uh, building blocks and to test the evaluation is also the uh, uh, difficult part in, in this work. Does anybody else have a question? Well, with that, you know, we thank you very much and I wish everybody a happy spring break. We'll be back in two weeks um, and we look forward to seeing you then. Okay.